So just being able to get away and get out of Sydney, it's a little, a little bit hectic at times and to be able to come to a place like this where you've got a beautiful lake system, it's close to the ocean, there's a lot of fish in here and be able to just drift around on a kayak a little bit away from it all and be able to cast surface lures in you know a meter at most of water. The opportunity to fish spots like these is, is quite uh, accessible up and down the east coast of Australia. Google Earth is, is your friend. You can often find little inlets and things like that behind particular beaches that can be fished that, uh, and usually do hold good numbers of fish. It's not an expensive exercise. We're, we've pretty much come here. We've got a couple of swags, a couple of guys have got tents. We've got a grill sitting on some bricks and that's pretty much all you need. And it's, it's a pleasurable thing to be able to do to get away from the, the city and sit out here seemingly in the middle of nowhere and uh, just fish whenever you like. Sit down, have a relax, get up, go for a fish again. It's awesome. Tell you what, they were bloody aggressive over there. One came right out of the water. So better quality fish, taking on a little stick bait. Put up a good fight on light tackle. See you, mate. Fishing here, it's really shallow and uh, the, the bottom's covered with weed. But when we went for an explore yesterday, we found some areas where there was like patches in between the weed of sand and the fish were, um, I think, focused around those patchy areas. And uh, also wind lanes, we had a little breeze blowing and you'd come around a point and there'd be a bit of a wind lane going down one side. Uh, it's like with trout fishing when, when you're in a big lake that the fish, the wind blows the food down there and the fish sort of congregate. And, we found a few fish around there, but they were definitely focused around those areas where the, um, you know, the sort of the holes were between the weed and the sand. And uh, I guess the other thing that we, we found was that um, really long casts uh, and long pauses when you were working your surface lure. So you'd belt out as long a cast as you could, um, work it a couple of times when it hit the water, and then do a really long pause. Just wait, 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 wait and then the next twitch often you just got whacked. And some of the strikes were really aggressive. The fish, one fish I caught just came right out of the water. Just this yellow goldy brim just went smack. It was fantastic. And then in other ones, they were really subtle, like they sort of slurped it off the surface. It was uh, quite uh, interesting to see the reaction of the different fish. Like one would be really aggressive, the other one would be a lot more timid. So it's one of the great things about fishing, you know, it's always different, it's always exciting. Yeah, it feels so strange going to, you know, straight through fluoro after using braid. You just don't have that sensitivity when you're retrieving the lure. No, it's got a little bit of uh, give in it, so it doesn't transfer as well to the rod, I guess. Uh, no, it's just it's weird because, you know, you use braid for everything and you're used to that direct sort of mm. contact with the lure. Yeah, absolutely. And this water, I mean, it's a bit deeper, obviously, but it's still really clear, so... You know, I can see the three pound fluoro being a much better option for this sort of fishing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely improves your catch rate, all the things. Alright, so Jim, what have you put on for this little area? Well, I just put a little hard body on, just a shallow diver, and it seemed a bit deeper here, and there's not as much weed, so. It is very deep, actually, compared to areas where we fished before. Yeah, so. Did you, when you were down here last, just a slow roll, or? Yeah, just a slow roll with a little hard body. Yeah. In these deeper sections. Any pauses or just no pauses. They float pretty quickly, so if you pause, it'll just pop up to the top real, real fast. Okay. So just a really slow roll, all the way back. Yeah. Well, this one's loaded up with that three-pound fluoro, so. Yep. Hopefully the, uh, even though it's a bit deeper, it's still really clear. It is clear. Yeah. So I need that stealthy sort of aspect. I guess when, we, when we're fishing down here, we're using surface lures and, and small, shallow diving minnows. For the surface lures, using something like this, a bit of braid, a mono leader, and a stick bait. This one's about 70 mil long. Um, the braid basically has less stretch, so we use that basically so that as soon as we move the rod, the lure's gonna move. Uh, if you're using a, a shallow hard body, I run fluoro all the way through. Gives it a really nice action casts well 
and it's also quite invisible. The water is really clear here, so you've got to be careful when you're, when you're paddling around, you'll spook fish pretty easily, so long casts are pretty important. Um, and not too much splashing around, because you'll end up catching nothing. I'm using a little shallow crank style lure. It doesn't dive very deep, it's actually not more than a metre here really. It just sort of just goes under the surface, and it's just a slow wind basically. I like the natural colours, personally. You can use anything with that sort of profile. Most colours will probably work, so there was a little fish just came up then, and had a follow. Well conditioned, not bad. Yeah, fishing always sends up a few surprises. I just hooked a nice brim on a flat and I was fighting it and um, I was obviously sort of engaged with that and I looked down and there was a snake trying to climb in my canoe. <laughs> this black snake was swimming across the across the creek here and he obviously thought the kayak was a log or something. <laughs> it scared the hell out of me. Unexpectedly compact. Uncompromising reliability. Unbelievably fuel efficient. Unbridled power. Mercury has delivered a new range of 75 to 115 horsepower four stroke outboards, unlike anything the world has ever seen. Unthink everything you know about four stroke. simplicity of river fishing is really, really attractive. All you need is a small box of lures. Uh, I use anything from little bladed spinners to small minnows to small soft plastics. Uh, I also use these tiny little flies that have like a soft plastic sized lead head on them and you cast them at just as you would a soft plastic, but they work really well for trout as well. And all I'm doing is I'm just using a little spinning rod casting around the thing that's really important though is you need to look at where you think the fish might be hanging out and that's behind a rock or in a faster bit of water or underneath an undercut bank so you're always picking your casting target and then you're just throwing your lures around little backpack on your back it's really good we've just finished a nice little session in one of the snowy mountains rivers up here we've come up here specifically to cast some lures around for trout we had a pretty good session we got quite a few fish but I think what I really liked about it is we were expecting the river was going to be high and maybe dirty because I've had a lot of rain here. And it was really nice just to turn up to the river side and see that the water's running nice and clear. And then we caught a couple of fish fairly early on. We didn't catch lots of fish, but we saw them. 
and there are lots of spots that look like they might hold fish. So it's just a really good way to spend the day. You get a bit of exercise in, you do a fairly decent walk. It's pretty rough terrain, so you're burning up a few kilojoules. And it's just a really nice way to spend the day. I come from the coast, so heading up here to the Snowy Mountains is almost a, an exotic trip. The landscape up here is so different from back home and the fishing is, is completely different as well. Uh, trout are uniquely challenging, uh, almost frustrating fish. Sometimes they can be really easy to catch and other times they're almost impossible to catch. So uh, they're always interesting and they're always presenting something new and a different challenge which you know is one of the reasons we all go fishing. I guess I like walking up the rivers most of all. Um, I really enjoy casting lures into the runs and the pools and the riffles trying to find where the trout are hiding in the current and presenting the lure in a way that looks natural to them and uh, when you do hook up the fight is always really good in that fast water the fish are always fit and healthy and they jump and play up in the current it's it's great and the whole environment's really cool as well just watching that beautiful clear water coming down over the rocks and you've got the thick bush on the side of the rivers i do enjoy that a lot a nice little rainbow out of a rapid on a little Rapala lure. So we're just walking up the banks of this the river, the Threadbow River in near Jindabyne. Just casting into the runs and the rapids and the pools. They've got a brown and this little rainbow jumped on. So I'll get the hook out of him and get him back in the water. Beautiful little fish, aren't they? Look at the colours on it. We're here on the New South Wales south coast, Jervis Bay, my, um, my home waters. Mick's come down from the office to spend a day with me down here uh, fishing in the bay. Um, we've been lucky enough to score a few squid this morning. When the sun was a bit lower, we, uh, we lucked onto a few nice squid. A couple of decent ones we'll probably take home for dinner mm -hmm. and a few nice ones for live baits. And uh, a few mates of mine have been getting some kingies down here in the bay. And um, when we caught those little live squid, I thought, well, geez, we should buddy a few of them around for uh, uh, kinging as well. Okay, here's our little uh, bait size squid. Got a two hook rig, one hook goes through the back of the squid, stick the other one up here near his head. So he's now ready to troll along like that. Get him in the water as soon as we can so he doesn't die. There he is. So I've got a sinker just to get the squid down a bit deeper in the water column. I've just looped it onto an elastic band. Just going to put this onto the uh, the braid, just to get him down a little bit deeper. 
And if you were down rigging, you'd obviously be able to set your depth a lot more efficiently. But this is this is pretty good. This is this is okay. So you just loop that on there. And that'll get that squid down, you know, probably 20 or 30 feet. Then we just feed him out a bit. Now we're in about 60 foot of water here. I wouldn't mind the squid being down about 30, so I reckon he's down about that now. And I'll just get Mick to put us in gear and slow troll us forward. And not a bad idea to set your drag. I set it reasonably tight. Uh, Kingies are you know, dirty fighting fish, so we want to try and control it as much as we can. So yeah, the key now is just to slow troll this squid along the edge. Hopefully we'll mark some fish or mark some bait. And better focus our efforts around there. So that little squid will be uh, slow trolled along there and hopefully any kingies around won't be able to resist him. Getting a run. Mick, take us out that way, mate. Got the net there. It's coming up. If you move that thing out of the way. Now I've got to get this sinker off, Mick. Mick, got to get that sinker off, mate. Pull it off, rip it off. Not a bad king. Nice king. Got him? Oh. Hey, he's swam out. Get him in the net, mate. Woohoo! Well done, Jim. Thanks, mate. That's a nice There you go, not a bad JB Kingy. Live squid. Well, that wasn't a bad little session, was it, Mick? Oh, it was fantastic, Jim. Loads of fun. Yeah, yeah, they're great fish, the old kingies. But um, I think uh, that sort of demonstrates if you're prepared, you know, you've got the gear on board, you can take advantage of the situation. I mean, we were initially live baiting, and we got, you know, a reasonable fish doing that. Yeah. But there obviously wasn't too many of those size fish around, you know, a lot of the little fellas. So, you know, micro jigs, poppers, soft plastics. Yeah, you know, a world of sport fishing fun. Um, whereas if we just trolled the live squid around, we probably would have lost all our squid to the the rat kings. Um, but instead, we kept our squid, and we've uh, had a ball on the light gear.